This video should show you how to analyze the data that you generated in the Vernier solubility product constant of calcium hydroxide experiment. And we'll go from the graph all the way to the calculations that you need to do to find the KSP. You should have gotten a graph that looks like this, where you started adding milliliters of acetic acid or more likely hydrochloric acid here so the pH is going down as the hydroxide is neutralized. Here in this area we have the equivalence point. The equivalence point on a pH titration is the point where the amount of acid H plus ions added exactly equals the number of base hydroxide millimoles that were present at the beginning of the titration. It is the inflection point on the curve, on this S curve, where the curvature turns from negative, as it is here, to positive, as it is here. Now, with a strong acid weak base combination, as you had in this experiment, should it be above, below, or equal to 7? The answer, of course, is below 7 because with a strong acid and weak base you form a salt, in this case it would be calcium chloride, that is slightly acidic. It's hard to estimate here the equivalence point because you added probably 0.5 milliliter increments. So just where was the equivalence point? Well, we're going to use calculus to solve the problem. On the Vernier graph, you're probably on page 1, the one that looked like the previous slide. It gives the pH versus milliliters of acid added. What you're going to do is go up to the top of that page where I'm showing you here, where it says page 1, and click on this, and you will see page 3 come up. Page 3 plots the second derivative of the pH against the milliliters of acid you've added. And what the second derivative is, is the slope of the slope of the pH curve. It looks like this. As you can see, it's fairly flat, and then it has a big jump down. That's where the pH curve took a big downturn. And then it has a big jump up, and it goes through the zero first or der second derivative point uh, right about here. The x volume intercept, or the volume intercept, is the equivalence point. That's the volume of acid at which the, the moles of H plus equal the original moles of the hydroxide. If you then click on your Vernier control panel at the top on Analyze Examine right here, you click on Analyze and then click on Examine in the pop-up box, you'll get a vertical cursor that you can move across the graph and find exactly where it crosses. And then down here in the parentheses, you're going to be able to read the volume, which would be the first number, of this particular equivalence point. That gives you the volume of acid that you needed to neutralize the hydroxide ions that were originally in the calcium hydroxide saturated solution. You can now calculate the hydroxide ion concentration because you know the volume and molarity of the acid, and you know the volume of the calcium hydroxide solution that you added to the flask where you were doing the titration. The volume of the acid times the molarity of the acid, the molarity of the hydrogen ions, is equal to the volume of base times the molarity of the hydroxide ions. So you can solve for this uh, parameter. Now you know the hydroxide molarity. 
you have a dissolution equation, the calcium hydroxide breaking up into calcium ions and hydroxide ions. From that, you should be able to write the expression for the solubility product constant. Now, you also know the relationship from the stoichiometry, the relationship between the calcium ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration. It's a simple ratio. Once you have calculated the calcium ion concentration from the hydroxide concentration that you got up here, you can then plug the concentration of calcium ions and hydroxide ions into your solubility product expression and solve for Ksp. You will then compare that with the accepted value of Ksp for calcium hydroxide, and once you have done that, you will report the percent deviation or error as the absolute value of accepted minus experimental divided by accepted, then multiplied by 100. That gives you your percent deviation or percent error.